Now today, uh, people often get confused when they think about witchcraft. And part of the problem is that we've had the growth in the last 30 or so years of a very strong neo-pagan movement in Western society, in Europe and in North America. Now, this movement goes back really into the 19th century, but it came to the fore in the 60s and 70s, and it's continued to grow. And people often wonder, what's the relationship between that and African witchcraft? And the simple answer is really none. Uh, African witchcraft, they use the same word, but it's a very different type of thing. And uh, while African witchcraft and sorcery, and one's got to be very careful here because um, there are different terms used in the different African languages, so that sorcery and witchcraft in different African societies are sometimes more or less the same, sometimes very different. But essentially, uh, when one talks about African witchcraft, one thinks of the work of people like the anthropologist uh, Evans Pritchard, and uh, his uh, great book, Witchcraft, Oracles and Magic Among the Asandi, where he points out that uh, contrary to what Westerners had thought, uh, the witchcraft systems are not illogical that there is a logic. Once you accept certain premises, uh, African witchcraft follows um, automatically. People know how to behave in society. So witchcraft is a sort of social control. It's a way of ordering society. It's a way of explaining things in Africa. For example, um, you know, uh, I get the flu and my wife and my son and my colleagues don't get the flu. So why did I get the flu? I know how flu spread. I mean, you know, that somehow I came into contact with the virus, I got the flu. But why me? And this is the question that African witchcraft uh, attempts to answer. It's not um, Africans can hold witchcraft beliefs and still accept modern medicine. They can still accept germ theory, they can still talk about viruses, but Western medicine doesn't explain why, it explains how. We, we get our colds, we get our illnesses because of certain things. Or, for example, you know, if I'm living in a traditional African society, um, I cook outside on a log fire, I um, warm myself on the log fire and everything, and I've got a thatched roof on my huts. And then one day a spark flies from the fire and gets onto the hut and sets it on fire. Now, why does it happen that one day when normally it doesn't happen? You know, sparks fly in the air, but they go out, uh, and you don't get fires from them. But that rare occasion when the hut sets on fire, why? What causes it? And in African witchcraft, the explanation is that it's caused by a witch, someone who is external to the group, so, or sometimes someone who is within the group, but normally external, who wishes me ill and causes me to catch the flu, or causes me to be ill, or it can be not necessarily a um, living person, but it can be a person who is uh, the living dead, an ancestor. Uh, you know, maybe I've forgotten to honor my parents uh, after they died. You know, I've celebrated their death for several years, and then uh, one year I forget to honor them. Uh, and then they remind me. Some, something bad happens to me, and that's why. That is what African witchcraft is. Whereas Western Wiccan are, is a movement that really developed um, during the 19th century and came to the fore in the, the mid-20th century. Now, I know some Wiccans will say that's rubbish, we're an ancient, Christi uh, an ancient pre Christian tradition, uh, but I would point them to Ronald Hutton's book, uh, The Triumph of the Moon. And Hutton's important, he's professor of history at the University of Bristol, and he's also a neo pagan himself. So he's a practicing modern pagan, but he says, look, if we're going to be practicing modern pagans, let's be honest, we can't trace our religion back to a pre Christian form of uh, religion. This is a religion which is a religion of nature that has been discovered and invented. We may draw on old themes, but there isn't a continuity. And so we've got a, basically a new religious movement that meets my religious needs in the 20th century. And we call this Wiccan. Uh, 
But that's very different to the sort of thing that goes on in Africa. And on the whole, Wiccans are fairly harmless. I mean, one occasionally comes across groups that go into some sort of um, black magic or satanic cults and things, and they can be dangerous. But most people who would be neo-pagans would simply feel that they've got to protect the earth and that the earth's speaking to them, and uh, they've got beliefs which are essentially harmless beliefs.